Hello, I'm Adrian. This is a video for anyone who's looking for information about formula feeding, how to actually do it, how do you mix up a bottle, what does it look like. There's a lot of stress around formula feeding in especially American culture in the last few years. There's a lot of guilt and shaming for families who don't uh, force the breastfeeding issue. And so if you're just looking for a non-judgmental place without any guilt and shame, this is the place. I've been formula feeding my two kids and my second kid is about to turn one and never eat a bottle again so I wanted to get this video made for you before I pack up all of my formula stuff. And before I even get into it, if you have a negative comment and you're getting all mad right now and you want to send some mean comments below, feel free to just close this video. I have heard the argument, breast is best and don't ever shake your formula and always use purified water, you're going to poison your baby forever. Like, please take those comments elsewhere. Quick background on me, I wrote an article in 2018 on Medium called Why Choosing a Formula Feed Was the Best Decision I Made as a New Mom. And more than 174,000 of you guys have read that article and really found it to be helpful. So I wanted to make this video as sort of a companion to that. I'll put the link to that as well if you want to read a little bit more about my decision to formula feed and why it's the best choice for our family. Um, but this is a little bit more about the technical aspect of what does it even look like to mix up a bottle? Because I see a lot of questions online about how to do it and answers that have a lot more stress in them than I think is necessary. Overall, there's no fear required in formula feeding at all. I, I am a big advocate for trying as hard as you can as new parents to not buy into the levels of guilt and shame that are tried to be put on you, especially moms. And one last thing on the note of fear, I really love this book called Small Animals, Parenthood in the Age of Fear by Kim Brooks. And one quote that she has, page 114, why have we all bought into this assumption that the parent who is the most cautious, the most irrationally afraid, the most risk averse is the best or most loving parent? When did a good parent become a parent who is constantly obsessively focusing on risk and not just any risk, but the wrong risk? And I just love that. I think in the conversation about formula, a lot of people are so worried that their kid's gonna be their growth is stunted forever and it's going to ruin their life, but like risks are very, very minimal and it's worth it. And disclaimer as well, this is what I do. This works for our family and I've got two babies who did not have any major health problems. They were not born prematurely. We live in an apartment in New York City that has clean water. And so if you have a similar circumstance, this can work for you, but ultimately check with your doctor if you have any concerns about the health of your child and whether they can handle formula feeding. All right, let's start. So gear you're gonna need, bottles, first of all. I love the Dr. Brown's bottles. They come in glass and they come in plastic. And I use both. This time around we had a dishwasher, so I had this idea that I would use glass because I didn't wanna put plastic in the dishwasher, but I sort of got over it because we already had all the plastic ones and I think it's good enough. These were recommended to us by a night nurse that we had our first couple nights of having our first child. And we got them and hadn't looked back. I had gotten some cute little Komotomo ones that look like a little boob, ended up throwing those out. They don't have the internal thing here. It has this little like flow thing that goes inside and so it keeps the, the flow from getting them too gassy. I haven't compared every bottle ever made but these work amazingly for us and so these are the ones that I always recommend. And then on to sterilizing and cleaning. This is a topic I wanted to mention in this video because I honestly haven't seen it in a lot of other places. There seems to be this idea that you need to sterilize the bottles every single time. And that may be something more relevant if you're using uh, actual breast milk, but I'm, I'm not sure because I've never actually used breast milk. But so what I know with formula is informed by this book, The Guide to Feeding Babies and Toddlers which I like uh, for also like introducing food to your four to six month old and just sort of thinking about food in general. But they say the first time you want, the first time you get your bottles, like if you order these and you're opening the box, sterilize them the first time. And sterilizing there means you put it in a big pot of boiling water and you really clean them out when you first get them. Um, but after that, I don't sterilize them. So then when it comes to cleaning, you can either clean them in the sink or clean them in the dishwasher. Our first child, we did not have a dishwasher, so what we always did was fill up a big mixing bowl with warm water and uh, some special baby dish soap. It makes us feel a little bit better that it's gentle, and so if a little bit is left on the bottle and the baby eats it, it, it feels a little less risky for them. And you put all the little parts in and really swash them around, really make sure that you get all the little nooks and crannies. Use a brush that is 
only used for your baby bottles, so you're not putting like chicken residue on your baby bottles. And I like the brush that is made out of metal. Here's a picture of this one. This is after we used the little plastic ones first, we used the Dr. Brown one. This one is the one that we found lasts the best when you're really washing bottles multiple times a day and you need it to last. And you just wash it all up and you let them dry. I really like these little uh, grass drying racks so that you have a spot to let it all dry. There's a bunch of stuff and a bunch of bottles and if you're feeding a baby all day long, you want it separated from your other dish stuff just because they're little and fiddly and you don't want to lose them. And then in the dishwasher, we have a dishwasher with this baby, it's a lot easier. We again got a special baby dish soap, and here's the one that I like. It's um, made for the dishwasher this time though, but then I also got this little rack thing that you put in the top rack, and it just helps accommodate all the stuff. You can load in all the little pieces in the side, you can throw in the rest of it, and the bottles you can just line up in the dishwasher, and that's it. I don't think I've washed a bottle once since we had this baby a year ago, so dishwashers are great, obviously, you know, if you have one. And if you don't, you can wash them too, it's fine. So yeah, no sterilizing, just wash them really well. An extra note, my husband just chimed in to say, we love these little brushes that they actually come with the Dr. Brown's bottles and these really help in the top parts of the bottles there's these tiny little holes and this allows you to really clean it. I haven't felt the need for it as much when we're using the dishwasher because it kind of blasts it out but these are excellent to use. Alright another thing you need to make formula is water and this seems to be a contentious topic when I watch YouTube videos that are out there about formula feeding. There's a like people have contraptions where it's like sterilizing the water I don't even know here's what we do your water if you live in a place like I live that I have an apartment and a sink where there's clean water that comes into my home and our family drinks it and it's safe to drink you can use that water to feed your baby I think there's a lot of fear about water for babies for some reason um, but for the most part if you're living in a similar situation to I am where you have clean water you're fine and so what that means for us is I don't boil the water first. I'm not putting it through some sort of a machine. I'm not buying special baby water or whatever. Just use the water. If you're drinking it, they can drink it. What we have done in the past, uh, since some waters, you know, if you're traveling, if you drink water somewhere else, sometimes it gives you a tummy ache. With when, when my babies were really, really little and we traveled and we were just staying with family or something, their water's safe to drink, but we didn't want to disrupt their little bellies. And so we had spring water. So you can use spring water if you want to be safe but it's expensive to do that all the time so maybe just if you're traveling and you're not sure about the water and then the temperature of the water especially for us where we have never done uh, traditional breastfeeding to our children they've, they've never eaten milk from a boob ever they don't even know that that's a thing that exists if they don't develop the preference for the warm milk that's at body temperature the way that it comes out they don't know that that's something that they should prefer and so you can just use water that is room temperature you don't want to give them cold 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 water like you would want to drink on a hot summer day because that can irritate their stomachs a little bit especially when they're little but if you just pour it out of the tap like room temperature that's fine it doesn't need to be warm you don't have to heat it in a baby heating thing with a formula maker you don't have to worry about boiling it or whatever I just pour it out of the, the tap so what we do is we fill up the water so on the side of the bottles they have the the measuring amount depending on how much you want to make for your baby and so we'll fill up the water if I want to make eight ounces I'll fill the water up to eight ounces and then you put your formula in we use powdered formula we like to use the happy baby organic there's a lot of great formula out there use your choice it all has to be regulated that it's all probably fine this is the one that we use and it's always worked for us some babies have different requirements that they have sensitive stomachs or something but we've had this one it works well Another thing that's somehow controversial is shaking it. I love these little flat lids um, because every time we make one, we use one of these little flat lids. And so you can just shake it up. And I just shake, like I'm not even worried about shaking at all because I feel really good about the Dr. Brown's bottles that take out any of the extra air bubbles. We've never had a baby with a tummy ache from just shaking it as hard as I want to shake it. And I think that's so much easier than, I don't know, gentle swirling or whatever else people are so worried about shaking it for some reason. So then the question of how long does it keep? Because at least with our babies, they eat a little bit, they hang out. And so if you make it, and this stuff is not cheap, you don't want to waste it. 
And I think some of the recommendations are really on the conservative side that you throw it out really soon. The recommendation that we follow is from our pediatrician, which is called Tribeca Pediatrics. They're a big uh, network of pediatricians in New York City. They've got this book, The New Basics, which I highly recommend just in general as new parents because it's kind of like any question you have about a baby who's sick or whatever else, really chill answers to how to deal with it. There's, there's no fear and anxiety in this book, which is what we really want to be doing as parents. But in here, they say two to three hours on the formula. You can really let it sit out. We let it sit out for, for quite a while and we've never had a problem. If you're pushing more like four, five, six hours, maybe dump it out and do a new one, but you'll figure out what works for you. I don't think you need to be dumping it out exactly when the clock strikes one hour or whatever other advice says that maybe you're seeing. So then the amount to feed, you'll have to figure this out based on recommendations. When we left the hospital after delivery, they gave a handy little chart, especially in the first few weeks and months. It changes quickly as they're growing really quickly, but then you're getting to kind of a rhythm. The last few months, we make them eight ounces at a time and she guzzles them right down. So you can find that information from your doctor about how much they should be eating. So just quick recap, how do you make a bottle? You take the bottle, you fill it up, the amount that you wanna make with water, you use a funnel, I recommend this funnel. I'll put a link to that. And scoop out the amount that you need. Put the flat lid on, shake it up, and then put all your stuff together. The way this goes together, you got the bottom of this, you got this that goes on the top. You wanna have clean hands, but I'm not, I don't have like sterilized gloved hands, like it's fine. And then you put this in here, pop it on, screw it on, you're good to go and you feed the baby, but bam, it works. Other items that I like, which are mildly irrelevant with our second baby when we've been living in a pandemic and not traveling and not going out much, but this little thing is made by Juvie. I'll put a link to this, and it's just a little travel dispenser of the powdered formula. You can measure out the amount that you want, so you could do up to three different bottles worth and just measure out the powder, throw this in your bag when you're on the way out of the house. If you're on a road trip or you're going out for the afternoon and you're not gonna have a chance to be around a sink or something easily, we'll measure out the water in however many bottles we need, maybe plus an extra one, like two or three bottles. Measure out the amount of water that you want, put the lid on, throw these in your bag, and then when you're ready to feed on the go, you can just flip the lid, pour out the amount that you need, shake it up, and you're ready. You've got everything that you need with you there. I also like this travel drying rack, kind of irrelevant because we haven't been traveling this time around, but you've got so much fiddly stuff. If you're staying in a hotel or staying with somebody else uh, while you're in this time of formula feeding, you can just open it up, put it by their sink and have a nice brush that's clean that's just your brush and put your stuff in and I get a little travel size of the baby soap as well for that. One other note with babies in the beginning, when you're feeding them, burp them often. This is kind of a suggestion for whether you're breastfeeding or formula feeding, but it's just a good reminder to keep the gas out and keep them from throwing up all over. When they're tiny, tiny in the first few weeks, you feed them a little bit, really burp them to get the burps out. Make sure you get the burps out before you put them in their bed. If you're laying them down and they haven't burped yet, that can give, make them upset and they can spit it all up, so. And that's it. It's really not stressful. And I think a lot of the advice that's out there, if it's coming from a formula company, they're really, trying to be careful and they're really trying to play into the politics around breastfeeding being the recommendation, but if you need help, you can do this. And so like as a real parent who's really doing this, I have no agenda and I can just tell you, it's not a big deal, it's easy to do. You can do it without guilt or stress. You're not a bad parent. If you wanna just formula feed for no particular reason instead of breastfeeding, it was an amazing choice for me. I can put the article that really gets into it here if you wanna read more about our thinking there, but it's something that's really freed me up to not have parenting a baby be part of my body anymore so yeah if you are thinking of formula feeding or you're formula feeding and trying to come up with a quick workflow i hope this is helpful for you if you have questions or nice comments please leave comments for me if you want to berate me for choosing to formula feed my child please don't i'll delete it and i hope that you are well and that your baby is well and that you're excited about this time babies are cute now that my kids are already getting older i mean older one and three and a half I see that it's really a short blip when they're tiny, tiny little babies. So as frustrating as it can be, enjoy it when you can. And I think formula feeding and having an easy workflow gives you more opportunity to try to just enjoy those little moments instead of worrying about the logistics of it. So good luck. I'm sure you're doing great. Thanks for watching. I might do other one-off videos about parent stuff, and I might not. So maybe I'll see you. Okay.